Hi, my name is Jason Collins, and this video is on probability weighting. In expected utility theory, probabilities enter the expected utility function linearly. That is, if an event is twice as likely as another outcome, it has double the weight. In contrast, prospect theory incorporates nonlinear weighting of probabilities by applying decision weights to each potential outcome. Experimental observation confirms that when making decisions under risk, we approximate linear probabilities for intermediate probabilities. But there is strong evidence that we overweight certain events when the probability of the event is one relative to near certain events, such as when the probability is say 99%. This overweighting of certainty is effectively the same as overweighting very low probability events. This diagram from Tversky and Kahneman 1992 illustrates the relationship between objective probability and the decision weight applied to each outcome. On the x-axis is the probability of the outcome. On the y-axis is the weight applied to the value function for that probability. The straight line at 45 degrees represents linear weighting of probabilities. The curve represents the weighting function. For this particular curve, where the probability is low, such as around p equals 0.05, the weight is around 0.15. Similarly, at high probability, such as p equals 0.95, the weight is around 0.8. For intermediate probabilities, the observed weight is relatively closer to the objective probability. Kahneman calls the large psychological value of the change from 0 to 5%, or some other small probability, the possibility effect. Unlikely but possible outcomes are given more weight than similar increases in probability for events that are already possible. He calls the large psychological value of the change to 100% the certainty effect. We will pay a lot more for certainty than near certainty. Probability weighting is often offered as an explanation for the LA paradox, which I discuss in another video. The LA paradox can be illustrated as follows. You are given the following pair of choices. First, choice one. Choose one of the following bets. Would you prefer bet A? which comes with a 33% pro probability of winning $2,500, 66% probability of winning $2,400, and a 1% probability of winning nothing. Or would you prefer bet B, with a 100% probability of $2,400? People tend to prefer bet B. Now for choice two, choose one of the following bets. Would you prefer bet C? with a 33% probability of winning $2,500 and a 67% chance of winning nothing, or bet D, which comes with a 34% chance of winning $2,400 and a 0% probability of, of, of sorry, a 66% probability of winning zero. People tend to prefer bet C. It can be shown that this pair of preferences, bet B and bet C, does not conform with expected utility theory. One explanation for this pair of decisions comes from probability weighting. If you look at bet B, the outcome is certain. Certain events tend to be overweighted relative to near certain events, such as the 99% chance of 2,400 or 2,500 in bet A. An alternative way of thinking about this is that the 1% probability of nothing in bet A is overweighted. Conversely, for the intermediate probabilities in bet C and bet D, they are weighted closer to linearly, which can result in the slightly higher expected value bet C being preferred. The weighting of probabilities is applied in prospect theory through a decision weight, pi of pi. The decision weight is a function of the probability of the outcome. This decision weighting function reflects the, reflects the empirical regularity that people overweight certain events relative to near certain events and overweight very low probability events. An example probability weighting function of a type proposed by Prelick in 1998 is as follows. The decision weight of, for, for probability P, pi of P equals E to the negative minus ln of P uh, to the power of alpha, where alpha lies between zero and one. This function with alpha of 0 0.6 is plotted on the slide. 